who can imagine in 21st century that something like this will happen? Ukraine's capital braces as Russian forces close in. Like the big tank forces, big armies of soldiers will, are going to invade some other country. People in Kiev fear for their safety and the country's future. Still they pour in across borders north, east and south. Terror for millions of Ukrainians. This Russian invasion just uh, destroyed our life. The Russians appear to have taken an airport as they prepare to close in. There is no let up in the bombardment. We don't want money. We don't want uh, something magic. We want victory. Around 8 million people have fled Ukraine since Russia's full-scale invasion began. More than 23,000 of them have sought safety in Scotland. Those who left were able to escape the warfare, but they still face battles of a different kind. When the bloodshed started in Ukraine, it forced nine-month pregnant Olena and her family to run for the border. There were explosions uh, sometimes in the middle of the night, and um, sometimes you could just walk on the street and you could hear all these shootings, and uh, you don't know where it comes from and what will happen next. We decided that we go to Bulgaria and I give a birth to baby there. After some time living there, we decided that this is not the best country for us to stay longer, and we decided to come back to Ukraine and uh, we had spent there two months. They now live in Glasgow on one of the two cruise ships that the Scottish government contracted for war refugees. The other is docked in Edinburgh. When we just arrived, we were very happy about life on the ship. And uh, um, of course, we didn't expect it could be so long, like four months. But for being there for one month or two, I think, it could be OK, you know, but when it's getting longer, you're getting tired. Around 2,200 people live across the vessels. They're squeezed into close quarters, and with that comes challenges. Elena says her children are constantly sick due to the speed at which illness is spread. On top of that, there's a huge demand for rooms on board. If you leave the ship for more than six days, um, you lose the opportunity to come back to the ship, even if you have relatives and even... Doesn't matter, you're not allowed. And uh, there are some stories that, uh, like part of the family, let's say father come back, he wants to join family on the ship, but he can't do that because ship doesn't accept people anymore. So he has to stay in one hotel and his family is staying on the ship. It's not their ideal scenario, but Elena's family are grateful. The ship has offered them a roof, a room and refuge. But that's all about to change. The MS Ambition in Glasgow is closing its doors on the 31st of March. Edinburgh's MS Victoria will shut in June. I don't know what will happen to my family. Um, I haven't heard any offers from the resettlement team yet. I've tried calling uh, to many social housing organizations, private rental, Sounds like something impossible in our case. I'm worried a lot about my future. I'm nobody here, and uh, that I can't get used to the fact that I had such a great life there. And now I have to start everything from the very beginning. Ten months ago, Tatiana Talalaiko left Kyiv with her sons and nieces in tow. She had to leave everything and everyone behind, including her husband, who is an army officer. He protects our motherland. He protects me and my sons. We have married more than 20 years. It's uh, my... He's my soul. It's, it's true. Daniel and Kirill are under 18, so they can't join their father on the front line, even though they wish they could. They were really missing our father, our relatives, and like um, 
they chose to like <laughs> run away. It was like uh, one of the most hardest scenes I have ever experienced in my life. People uh, ask me, why are you not happy here? It's a safe, it's a friendly, etc. And um, I'm alone here. We not a whole family. So how I can be happy? It's my answer, sorry. Tatiana is trying to build some sort of normal life for the sake of her family. I know I want to finish university in Scotland because uh, for us now in Ukraine it's so hard. Scottish people, it's so good people. They live in this flat rent-free thanks to a kind-hearted local. But in June, they have to move out. Tatiana fears they may end up homeless. I sp speak with some people about uh, social housing. <laughs> they told me, forget it. Because a lot of people want a social housing in Edinburgh. And uh, they have a lot of homeless people, a lot of people with disability. So um, I will be at the end <laughs> of this. And uh, I don't know, it's a really scary situation. Tatiana, who is a lawyer, says estate agents have told her she needs a UK-based guarantor to rent a property. But she doesn't have that, or a job, even though she has applied for many. I'm a good lawyer, really. <laughs> it doesn't matter here because we have a different system of law. But I don't lose a hope. <laughs> I find a job here and I will be work at the office or another good job. It's true. I decided. <laughs> Katerina Duvaci and her five-year-old Gotcha spent many nights in bomb shelters. But it was something that happened at their home that convinced Katerina they needed to leave. My daughter always uh, loved to build forces uh, from pillows, from umbrellas, and when she built uh, a big fort in our bedroom from all the pillows and all the umbrellas she could gather, and she sat inside and she said to me, this is my bomb shelter, I will live here, I don't want to go out. At that stage when she was building this forts, uh, bomb shelters, I understood that we are not going to make it here in Lviv, that we should leave Ukraine until my baby is still sane. So we, so we came to Scotland. Thousands of Ukrainians, including Katerina and her daughter, are living in sponsored hotels. Uh, the only reason we came here is uh, because I wanted my daughter to be safe. And the, the, the hardest thing for me as for mother is to keep smiling to my baby when I'm reading the news. Try not to cry, try not to involve her. Uh, this is not the kind of stress uh, like, oh my God, I forgot my uh, pie in the oven. This is kind of stress which can kill you if you want to deal with it. This is the kind of stress you cannot sleep in the night, even when you're safe. Just you cannot sleep because there are people there dying. And some of these people you know, I lost many friends already. Even though Katerina doesn't know when her hotel contract will end, she feels safe in Scotland. She's self-employed and works from her hotel room. Gotcha, who is now bilingual, is attending school. We don't feel here, as, by the way, as refugees. We feel here as guests. I never felt here as I'm something unwanted. Everybody are trying to help, just everybody. <laughs> but for her it was really fun. She loves her school, she loves her teacher, she loves everything about it. <laughs> She's playing, she already found some friends. <laughs> yes, we will be here in Scotland if I will enter the university for two more years, uh, just until my visa uh, will expire, 
But after the war will finish anyway, we will come to Ukraine to celebrate the victory with everybody. And I want to invite all Scottish people to Ukraine. You should visit us. We have a beautiful country and we're really the same. I mean, our spirit is the same. You should visit us and celebrate with us, of course. These families have told us they want to return to Ukraine when it's safe to do so. But while they wait, they're thankful for their temporary home, even though it's just that. Uh, I don't know how my life will be next years or 10 years, but I will never forget protect which Scotland give for me and my children. Of course, we are thankful. Uh, of course, they could not uh, predict each problem that may show up. And I want to say thank you to Scottish government, everyone who has created this program and uh, has made these invitations to Ukrainians. My gratitude is so big. It's... I don't think we ever will forget this. And I always say to my daughter, you should be thankful, and she is, yes, she is. And you should never forget, and when you'll be, even when you grow big and you become old, you will always think about how Scottish people help you, how they uh, kept you safe. I love Scotland. <laughs> I love Scotland. <laughs>